So here we go again with more suspension shots. This time I went so far as to actually remove one of my fenders just for you guys so we can see what's actually happening in the front as well as the back. I'm also going to throw in some labels just so we can figure out what camera angle we're looking at because sometimes it's not always that obvious. So let's get some full runs at regular speed and then I'll break down some of the highlights. makes sense when my tire pressures are wrong.
let's do some analysis of the highlights I found. In my last video, I was calling motion like this sidewall flex, but as a lot of people were pointing out, that's actually the toe changing just from the rear trailing arm setup and the old bushings I have on the car. It's easy to tell that it isn't actually sidewall flex because we can see from the tire on the outside of the frame that the sidewall isn't flexing enough to generate all that motion that we're seeing. With the camera zoomed in on the front tire, we can see actual sidewall flex as opposed to what we're seeing from the rear. So what I like about this view is that you can see the crank pulley when I'm turning left as well as most of the front suspension. Unfortunately, the camera was sideways to get everything in frame, so it takes a little bit of getting used to to try to get oriented. But watch as the engine moves when I get back on the gas out of the sweeper. So this camera view is towards the end of the day after my GoPro had overheated. So I was shuffling around cameras a little bit and trying out different angles. But what's great about this view is you can actually watch the shock movement. So these are Kony Sport shocks, which are traditionally yellow, but these ones were red as kind of a special kit. So don't let the color fool you with these. But a common question with the Kony Sports is what is the firm adjustment actually changing? Does it change compression or rebound? So let's go back and just watch a little bit of this in slow motion and compare. So right there, we can tell that the course had a bump, and as the suspension was driving over that bump, the spring compresses instantaneously, but the damper prevents the spring from expanding back to its natural state. So what that means is that the Kona Yellows, the adjustment is changing the rebound, and we can tell that because the compression was fast, which means damping rate was low, and the rebound was very slow, which means rebound rate was high. So this run here was actually the third in a row of back-to-back -back runs. And you can tell the tires are getting hot as I get out of the sweeper. The inside is actually getting pretty greasy. But what's interesting is that since this is the inside tire we're looking at, only the inside portion of the tire was in contact. So the outer part is completely dry and not greasy at all, which means it's cooler than the inside was. But if we fast forward back to grid, you can tell that my brakes were also getting pretty hot. So it's no wonder I was having problems braking. So this is actually the view from earlier before, but what I also found interesting about this view was watching the steering knuckle as it pivoted around the upper control arm ball joint. So it's just kind of neat seeing that in motion compared to when I have it apart in my garage. I honestly, you know, didn't really know what it was doing when I had it taken apart in my garage, but now I can actually can kind of get a feel for what's going on there. So as I drive to this next part here, let me just tell you that I've been considering fitting a 225 tire in my wheel well here, seeing if I can get it to fit. And the reason is Nexon doesn't make a 205 wide tire. But just look at the tire here, how close it is already to the frame, and you can see spots where it already has rubbed on the frame. So I don't think it's possible to fit a 225 under there. So hopefully you've enjoyed this video as much as I have. Watching my suspension like this has been really helping me to understand what the suspension is actually doing and also giving me ideas of ways to improve the setup of the car. So if you have any ideas of things you would like to see while I'm driving around an autocross course, make sure you leave a comment below with your idea and I'll see what I can do about making it happen. And also be sure to subscribe for more videos just like this. Catch you next time.